Well, good morning. What a beautiful morning. I took a Benadryl last night and slept like a log. Didn't wake up till 10 o'clock. <laughs> it is Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, November the 23rd. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I hope you're having a great time with family, with friends, with even if it's just as we're going to be on our own to celebrate a day of Thanksgiving, which incidentally was uh, officially given to us by Abraham Lincoln. So thank you, sir, for doing that. He wanted the nation to give thanks for the freedom and the prosperity and the plentifulness that we have in this country. And uh, it came at a cost. It came at a cost. May we all remember that. We're going to go straight into the King James Bible. The book of James, this is the final chapter, chapter 5. And uh, i got to admit, James's five chapters have been hard-hitting. Um, he's wanting to get his message across in a very precise and accurate way. And uh, we must take it that way. We must understand don't try to take the Word of God and twist it to fit your own ideas and theologies and way of life, etc., or peer pressures from the rest of the world. Let the Word of God stand on its own, and you conform to it. Go ye now, rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And you shall eat your flesh as if it were fire, for ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. You have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, Unto the coming of the Lord, behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another. Brethren, lest you be condemned, behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. We have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save up the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he, if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again 
and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from error of his ways shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Tomorrow we start the epistle, the first epistle of Peter. Now, I highlighted James chapter 5, 13 to 16. Because I want you to know this is from the mouth of God. The hand of James wrote it, but he was God-inspired. The testimony is that this has lasted over 2,000 years, okay? We know that, don't we? We know that. Every word written comes from the mouth of God. So let me read it again, because I want you to be absolutely clear on this. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Okay, I want you to understand this. That it says, ye may be healed. May is asking permission. It's something that might happen, you know. It's not, it will, it might be happening. But earlier on, it says, the Lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. That's telling that sick person, that the Lord has raised him up, that he is reborn, and that his sins will be forgiven him. Then you confess one another and pray for one another that he may be healed. See, there's two separate stages. You need to be saved before you may be healed. The, effective, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The only guarantee in that is at the beginning, when God, when they say that the Lord will save you, when you're saved, your salvation. Okay? We must understand this, but we may be healed. Paul wasn't healed of his affliction because God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Okay? We must understand that. We must understand that, all right? This is a hard life that we live down here. This is like, do you remember when you were in school and you had your exams at the end of the year and it was like, oh, I don't want to do this, but you ought to do it. That's what life is. Life is the test. Life is the testing of your soul and your spirit and your strength and your faith. During that process, we are to be thankful and feel the blessings of God. But of course, the first thing we must do is get saved, get baptized, accept the Holy Spirit. That must be said at every baptism, that the Holy Spirit comes upon that person. And our most recent baptism at the church, I saw that that happened in prayer, and that is fantastic. When you get baptized, you must realize that the power of the Holy Spirit is coming into your heart, that the Holy Spirit is now in you. You won't seek after the things that you sought after before. You will seek after the love of God. 
and wanting to do good in his name. That's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. It's fantastic. Well, James has been an exciting and very pertinent and direct book. And, you know, it... <laughs> five relatively small chapters. If you have any doubt about what you should read, but you're not really into long-term reading, just read the book of James. Read the book of James. It'll set you straight. It'll set you straight. And if you're having trouble with the King James Version, well, the English Standard Version is pretty clear and easy to understand. Ah, but most of all, keep yourself in the Word of God, always. And pray before you enter into the Word of God that the Holy Spirit, your helper and comforter, will give you the understanding that you need to draw out of the word for that day, for that moment. Okay, so that you can interpret it correctly. I pray before every time I open the Bible, I pray. I seek his help and guidance. Have a great day today. Don't overdose and trip to fan, fall asleep this afternoon. <laughs> We're probably gonna eat a little bit later in the day. We're more of an evening meal family. But have a great day. Have a loving and thankful day. Set this day aside to give thanks and praise to the Lord God. Think about all the blessings that have happened in your life, all the good things that have happened in your life. Look around you and see what he has blessed you with. You may feel you want to cut back a little bit, we certainly do. We've been overabundant in our wants and desires prior to being saved, and we feel burdened by an excess. And yet at the same time, we feel grateful for other things and blessings that have nothing to do with those things, have <laughs> nothing to do with those at all. It's amazing how your life flips around. Anyway, Thank you for listening. As I said, have a happy Thanksgiving and uh, may you enjoy the day. Probably be nice to get out and have a little walk in the fresh air after you've eaten. Just take a breather and say, thank you, Lord. Breathe in that air that he gave us. Even that alone. Wow. Perfect. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. Remember, God loves you. I love you too.